Welcome to another fun and exciting Bowtie Friday here at News Channel 8. I'm Junior Garcia, and here are some of the stories we have for you tonight. Vets to be honored this weekend. Vitima issues hurricane preparedness notice. And EDA requests Senate to act on legislation. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. TV8 News is brought to you by Total Excellium. More protection, more miles. Total, you know where to turn. Now our top story on Memorial Day, the American Legion District Number 10, along with the Office of Veteran Affairs, will honor local vets with a host of activities across the territory. District Commander Charles David and Veteran Affairs Director Harry Daniel announced that the territory has several events planned for Memorial Day. In addition to the Memorial Day Parade, Post members plan to place flags on all veterans' graves in the cemeteries in the Virgin Islands and attend church service at a church of their choice on Sunday, May 25th. The Legion, in conjunction with the Virgin Islands National Guard 73rd Army Band, will perform and sponsor a pre-Memorial Day concert at the Vern Richards Veteran Park in Fredericksted, St. Croix, starting at 5 p.m. Memorial Day, originally called Decoration Day, is a day to remember those who have died in our nation's service, he said. And in other news, May 25th through May 31st marks Hurricane Preparedness Week in the Territory. The Virgin Islands Territorial Emergency Management Agency, in conjunction with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, encouraged residents to start preparing now for the 2014 Atlantic hurricane season. The Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th with the anticipated development of El Nino this summer. NOAA has forecasted a normal to below normal hurricane season for 2014. El Nino causes stronger wind share, which reduces the number and intensity of tropical storms and hurricanes. Preparedness is the key to our recovery from the impact of major storm or hurricane, said Elton Lewis, Vitima director. It's been at least four years since a storm has significantly impacted the territory, and what we don't want is for the community to become complacent. New tonight, officials with the Economic Development Association is requesting that the Senate act quickly on pending legislation for St. Croix. Holland, yes, um, right now, uh, as was mentioned before, we're in a global battle mm -hmm. for economic development. And we've researched what other jurisdictions are offering. We've talked to beneficiaries. We've talked to potentials. And there needed to be some adjustments to our EDC program. We submitted a bill that has been down there for three months now mm -hmm. that we're still trying to get out of the Committee of Jurisdiction to the Rules Committee. We and, and we're hoping for that to come up. We also, the Government Development Bank SBDC, SBDA bill that this amendment was tacked on to, it went through the full vetting. There was no objection to it, and uh -huh. then this got tacked on. We'd like to see that come back without the amendment so we can get that. And uh -huh. one of the important things in that yeah. bill what was the fact that we would now be able to collect collateral on the microcredit loans, which are the biggest part of our sure. uh, delinquencies. delinquencies. We also have the Enterprise Zone Commercial Zone Bill that we'd like to see get passed so that we can have the commercial zone so that we can offer benefits in those areas that don't have the poverty but have fallen into disrepair and bring them back. Mm -hmm. um, the Hotel Development Bill is set to sunset this September. Wow. We have which is tomorrow, right? We have two two beneficiary, two potential hotel developers that want to make use of this bill, but there were some holdbacks. Mm -hmm. One of the holdbacks was that it's going to sunset. The second holdback, and and one of the developers is looking at uh, Water Island. Water Island was not included in the bill. Yeah, wow. Well. And the third thing was. The bill required all of the participants in the Hotel Development Act to pay a half a million dollars a year to the Tourism Revolving Fund. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a small 50-room hotel, half a million dollars a year is going to bankrupt you. You know, it's strange. You know, it would be my advice, and of course nobody listens to me anyway. 
However, these kinds of legislation, because the only way we're going to really get out of this is to grow our way out of it, and should have a priority, and fast track them. In other words, run through committee. But after they've, they've exhausted you on these bills already, haven't they? They just have yes. not put it on the agenda, right? The hotel the hotel yeah. development bill hasn't That's, come. No, but you've vetted come. all of this, right? Yes. We've vetted it. It has gone through the uh, committee of jurisdiction. and All of them except, except the hotel the development. Hotel. All right, so that needs to go what? To the rules committee or committee of origin? All right, I'd like to see it get get fast-tracked to the Committee of the Whole. Well, not like this there. amendment, no, please. No, not like this amendment. All right? You want to have it go through one committee. Yeah, and, and the thing is, we, we have discussed the hotel development bill with the stakeholders, and everyone's... And September drop date. September, the hotel de- expires. So when you talk to them, Percy, you talk to the president of the legislature and the yes, majority sir. leader I at do. times. When you emphasize these things, what do they say to you? But I'm, I'm trying to work with, with Senator Millen. Yes, who has been a great recept- gal, who has been very receptive mm-hmm. to our suggestions and thoughts, and I will continue um, discussing it with her to see how quickly we can get it on the agenda mm-hmm. and bring them to to fruition because it's holding up our economic development. In continuation with the observance of National EMS Week, St. Croix firefighters recently underwent CPR recertification training. St. Croix Fire Chief Corey Kent tells us more. My name is uh, Corey Kent. I'm the Fire Chief for the St. Croix District. And here at Red Cross today, we, uh, the Fire Department is undergoing recertification for CPR. Um, it's a two-week training, which will uh, verify that each firefighter in the fire service here on St. Croix is recertified to do CPR AED um, response. We have 78 firefighters here on St. Croix, and uh, each one of them is required to be CPR certified. Each day, each day a different shift comes in and they're required to come here um, to do this PR training. Um, during this training, uh, there is still a station in each district, the Christian Stead District and the Frederick Stead District, that is still open to respond to any emergencies that, may, uh, that we may be called to respond to. These guys are still on call. Um, depending on the severity of the incident, um, these guys who are here in training right now will respond to that incident. The, uh, the training will then be postponed or, or rescheduled for a later date. We want a, uh, the public to, be, to feel comfortable knowing that we're, we're up on our training and uh, anytime they do call for assistance from the fire department that we're responding with well-trained uh, responders. If you have emergencies, uh, most of you may already know the number to call would be 911. If you're used calling from a cell phone, the number to call would be 772-9111. Stay tuned, we have more news after this. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. Now here is Cynthia Graham with your nightly Caribbean report. Thank you, Junior. A major case of police corruption has rocked Puerto Rico tonight. Sixteen current and former Puerto Rico police officers were indicted yesterday for their alleged participation in a criminal organization run out of the police department using their affiliation with law enforcement to make money with robbery, extortion, manipulating court records, and selling illegal narcotics. The criminal action today dismantles an entire network of officers who, we allege, used their badges and their guns not to uphold the law, but to break it, said acting assistant attorney David O'Neill. From illegal activities of planting evidence to make false arrests, then extorting money in exchange for their victims' release from custody, the 16 officers were slapped with a total of 36 charges. At this point, the charges contained in the indictment are merely accusations. The defendants are presumed innocent unless and until proven guilty. St. Kitts Nevis government says it remains committed to working with regional and international allies in bringing changes to its citizenship by investment program, CIP, following concerns raised by the U.S. Treasury Department. 
This is according to Prime Minister Denzel Douglas. Earlier this week, Washington warned financial institutions in St. Kitts and Nevis to be on the lookout for certain foreign individuals abusing the CIP program. The advisory said, quote, it believes that illicit actors are abusing this program to acquire St. Kitts and Nevis citizenship in order to mask their identity and geographic background for the purpose of evading U.S. or international sanctions or engaging in other financial crimes. St. Kitts and Nevis's CIP program offers citizenship to non-citizens who either invest in designated real estate with a value of at least $400,000 or contribute $250,000 to the St. Kitts Nevis Sugar Industry Diversification Foundation. In sports news tonight, Jamaica's favorite son, Usain Bolt, is on track to make his seasonal debut in just a few weeks. The Olympic sprint champ is set to return to the track on June 17th, around the middle of the international track and field season. The 27-year-old world record holder for both the 100 and 200 meters has sought to reassure his fans who may be worried about his late season. There is never anything to worry about, he said. For me, I take my time throughout my seasons, and you know the season is never perfect. Bolt will also compete in Paris on July 5th and in Zurich on August 28th. And finally tonight, here's a story that will warm your heart. An Anguilla man, Nadal Nathaniel Hodge, turned 99 last Tuesday, and he is a very vibrant 99. His family was on hand at his Long Ground residence to help him celebrate. Mr. Hodge, an English and Spanish-speaking Anguillan, was born in 1915 in Sandy Hill, Anguilla, and moved to the Dominican Republic at the age of 12. He later married and became the father of nine. When asked his secret to longevity, Mr. Hodge credited it to living a good life and having caring, close-knit family. As part of Mr. Hodge's milestone birthday celebration, the Reverend Menes Hodge from Anguilla's Anglican Church pronounced blessings upon him. 99 years of age is complimentary, and I pray that Nadal will continue to live for many more as the Lord wills. A very happy birthday to you, Mr. Hodge. We'll check in with you at 100. Well, this has been tonight's Caribbean Report. I'm Cynthia Graham. We'll be back with you on Monday to bring you more news and views from in and around the Caribbean. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. Junior, back to you. Well, thanks, Cynthia. And David the Firewalker has details for this weekend's Firewalk. Firewalkers, are you ready? Sunday, 25th. We start, walk, we're going to be walking from Fredericksburg Battlefield to Mahogany Road, Oxford Road, Mount Victory, Creaky Dam, and back to Fredericksburg Ball Park. Repeat, Fredericksburg Ball Park, Mahogany Road, Oxford Road, Mount Victory, Creaky Dam, back to Fredericksburg Ball Park. The walk starts at 5 a.m. sharp. Be there by 4.30, 4.45, warm up time, and we leave exactly at 5 a.m. sharp. Remember to walk with at least one bottle of water. Sunday, we don't have a bus, so you need to walk with at least one bottle of water. Come on out, let us go for a walk. It's just about seeing your island, enjoying your island, and let us see the waterfall. Yes, the waterfall by Creaky Dam want to see you there. Remember, the walking help you with a high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Come on out, walk with us. It's just a walk for you and me to enjoy our island. Your doctor is exercising, so I want you to exercise before your doctor tell you to exercise. Sunday, 25th, we start Walk, we're going to be walking from Fredericksburg Battlefield to Mahogany Road, Oxford Road, Mount Victory, Creaky Dam, and back to Fredericksburg Ball Park. More news straight ahead. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810.
This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. If you missed it, VI reggae star Pressure appeared on the Wendy Williams show yesterday performing his hit single, Virgin Islands Nice. Let's take a look. All month long, we've been giving away trips to the U.S. Virgin Islands during our Hot Tropics giveaway. Here to perform Virgin Island Nice from his new CD, The Sound, please welcome the Virgin I U.S. Virgin Islands' own reggae artist, Pressure. of this the real and the african style yeah send them a and send john and send cry nothing can come between us but the waters that divide yeah even though we're just a few square miles i travel around the world with virgin island pride yeah a lot of people still going to shine still we live a joyful life that's why they play it nice so Things have to continue. We are people of great value. That's why we stick together like tamarinds do. Hey, remember Queen Mary when made the fire burn? And Edward blinding with the Africa vision. Remember St. John with the slave rebellion? General Butler say emancipation. That's why the place nice. So nice. So nice. St. Thomas sweet and nice. Jackson was a champion in the ring. I know him three son, them a do the same thing, yeah. Tim Duncan come from the VI. One of the greatest and the world can see why, yo. If you ever ask me where I'm from, born in a Virgin Islands and the whole place nice. So nice, so nice. So nice. Sent up a sweet and nice. So nice, so nice. Look for the word of the day during tomorrow's show. It's your last chance to enter to win an eight day, seven night trip to the US, yes. Virgin <laughs> Island. Yes, the VI nice, so nice, so. Pressure, I'm gonna leave that up to you. You're doing an awesome job. Now listen, stay with us. We have your weather coming up next. Your weather coming up next.
your weather. And here's a look at your local weather. Tonight, isolated showers after 8 p.m., partly cloudy with a low around 74. East wind 11 to 13 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 10%. Saturday, isolated showers partly sunny with a high near 88. East wind 9 to 13 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 10%. Saturday night, isolated showers, partly cloudy with a low around 75. East wind, 8 to 10 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 10%. Sunday, isolated showers, mostly sunny with a high near 88. East wind, 11 to 16 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. Sunday night, isolated showers, partly cloudy with a low around 71. East wind, 8 to 17 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. Memorial Day, isolated showers, sunny with a high near 86. East wind, 10 to 14 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. Monday night, isolated showers, partly cloudy with a low around 72. East wind, around 17 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. And Tuesday, isolated showers, sunny with a high near 88. East wind, 16 to 18 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. This is Essie Gaston Edwards with your News Channel 8 weather report. Well, that brings us to the close of another fantastic Bowtie Friday. Many people ask, where do you get the fresh lineup? Well, I get it from one place, and that's Malik's Barbershop over there in Lorraine Plaza. Tell them I sent you. That's all the news we have for tonight. Do not forget to like us on Facebook at WSVICHA. You can also follow us on Twitter at WSVI TV News. And be sure to subscribe to Channel 8 on YouTube at WSVI-TV News Channel 8. Watch us on your computer. Plus, use the free Dish Anywhere app to DVR us and watch us anywhere in the world on your smartphone or tablet. That's all the news we have for you tonight. I'm Junior Garcia, and World News is up next. Good night, Virgin Islands. TV8 News was brought to you by Total Excellium. More protection, more miles. Total, you know where to turn.